As I now accept the highest expression of a new minister into my life, I know that they will be revealed in a way that will glorify God and serve the highest and greatest good of all who are touched by their presence. I am grateful God is gracious. Amen. So Genesis, we are continuing, as most of you know, um, in our minister search. Um, we have our profile and invitational video available for review on the CSL Minister Listserv. Once we start, well, we're going to continue to be receiving applications. And as we have those applications and, and go further with our search, um, we'll be involving the community more, um, as we will be having guest speakers, and hopefully everybody can come actually to the theater itself, which would be wonderful, to witness those so that we can decide, you know, whom is going to best serve Genesis. Announcements. These announcements are just reminders of what is happening. For detailed information about the following events, please check our website, our Facebook pages, Eventbrite, and our meetup pages. Every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., please join Karen Williams Practitioner, Cynthia Zink Practitioner, for intention circles via Zoom. A love offering is always appreciated. And if you are not already involved in one of our care circles um, and you want to join, I greatly um, recommend that you reach out to somebody. Our care circles kind of allows us to go and really be a little bit more intimate with each other. We get to really know and support each other. Um, we meet once a month. Um, either via Zoom, which we have been doing with the COVID, or originally it was always in a member's home, and maybe we'll get back to that someday, hopefully. But the meetings are approximately two and a half hours, and we do spiritual practices, share, care, and connect. They follow a structured meeting curriculum that supports and celebrates spiritual and personal growth. If you are not in the care circle now and would like more information, on how to join, contact Karen Williams via Facebook, or you can uh, always catch her on a Sunday at Carco. Uh, we've already done our selection committee update. Again, we're continuing to receive um, applications, and we will keep you informed as we go. I do want to say for our healers and hunters group that they're going to be um, coming together and offering the community um, a potluck. And it's going to be not this coming weekend, but the weekend after Labor Day weekend. I don't have the date handy. But know that they're going to be showering our community with some wonderful treats after service. So all are invited to attend. This, no, Sunday, August 28th, not this Sunday, but the next Sunday, is Reclaiming Joy After Loss. Um, it's from, it starts at 1.30 via, via Zoom. Join Cynthia Zink Practitioner and Diane Dyer Practitioner Emeritus in a caring, safe, and supportive environment to reclaim joy after loss. And of course, if you have, if you want any more information on any of these activities or events, they're always available um, on our Facebook page and uh, meet up. So, are there any first timers attending Genesis in person? Um, if you are comfortable, please stand up and introduce yourself. Um, if it's something you're not very comfortable with, please know that Cynthia, our greeter, is available to speak with you after service or you could always see me, um, but yes, are there any first timers that would like to introduce themselves? Yes, hi. Hi, I'm CJ Ebersol. Hi, hi CJ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Max. <laughs> was that Max? Yeah. Yes, hi Max, I was having a hard time hearing. I'm Drew Ebersol, nice to meet you all, and I'm Drew Ebersol as well, first time. Hi Drew, nice to meet you, welcome. All right. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm Claudia Pursuit. I'm from New York and Florida. Nice. Nice. We're so glad 
pleasure joining us here this morning, Fritzy. And Cal, are there any online? No? Perfect. Well, welcome. Welcome, everybody, to, to our service this morning. So before we get going into the meat of the service, does anyone need a prayer card or an envelope? Andrew can come around and get you all set up. Perfect. So I'd like to take this time to thank everyone that is in service today. Practitioner Cynthia Zink is our volunteer coordinator and greeter before service. Jim Munson is stepping in and running our sounds and lights. Michael Johns is running camera for all of you watching from home as well as the projector behind me. And Andrew Young is our usher and will be collecting our offerings. And as I mentioned before, Cal is your communication link if you're watching online. Today our practitioner is Dave, but this morning I led a meditation before service, and if you missed that, it will remain on Facebook for 30 days. It was a meditation on play and letting go and getting out of our way so that God can be present in our lives and we can experience a little bit more of that joy. Um, so I recommend checking that out. Um, Dave will be available after service for prayer tune-ups um, in the corner of the theater. So now, let us go ahead and center ourselves in music. In a song that we can sing together as a community, asking God how we can be used. So please stand and join me in singing music. Here I 
practitioner yesterday and I was thinking about our theme for the month and I was thinking man what a cool time to be a practitioner because our theme for the month is play <laughs> and so I was thinking like what a find the inspiration for our meeting for for my reading today I always like to go within and what came to me is the, the great science of mind the venerable teacher Dr. Seuss we're going to read some Dr. Seuss for our reading today, for our little play time today. So that's our reading for today. So, so it's, oh, the places you will go, Dr. Seuss. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you are the guy, you'll decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care, and some will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down, not so many good streets. And you need not find any, you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there, things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsie as you. And then things can start happening. Don't worry, don't stoop, just go right along. You'll start happening too. You'll be on your way, you'll see great sights. You'll join high flyers and will soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed, you'll pass the whole game, and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you'll fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you'll go, you'll top all the rest. Waiting for the fish to bite, or waiting for the wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for Friday night, or waiting perhaps for their Uncle Jake, or a Potuo, or a better break, or strings of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a week with curls, or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the right places where boom bands are playing. Like second shot in Joe Penny. <laughs> <laughs> when banner flips flying, when somewhere you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky, ready because you're that kind of guy. Or the places you'll go, there is fun to be done, there are points to be scored, there are games to be won, and the magical things you could do with that ball will make you the winner, winnest winner of all. Fame, you'll be as famous as famous can be, with the whole world watching you, winning on TV. But on you will go, through the weather be foul, on you will go, through your enemies prowl, on you will go, through the hack and cracks howl, on and upper, a frightening creek, though your arms may get sore and your speakers may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far and face your problems wherever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know, you'll get mixed up with strange birds as you go. But be sure to step, step with care and great tack, and remember that life's a great balancing act. And never forget to be dexterous and deaf, and never mixed up your right foot with your left. And you will succeed. Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. <laughs> so be your name Buxom or Bixby or Bray or Mordecai Allen, Van Allen O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way. Amen. And so I must say, I think that that's a good time for us to close our eyes and let's pray. <laughs> and so taking that divine source, I just recognize that God, that presence, that love, that life, that energy, that divine, playful energy. Mm. I am just one with it right now, that playful source, that energy within, I recognize it within each and every one of us, we are all that source of energy, that love, that playfulness, that kid, that, that source of energy that just says, you know what, sometimes those schedules, sometimes that, just that monkey mind, all that stuff that goes on in our head, sometimes it's just time to play. And so I just realized that today is that day. 
Today is that day that we can just go out and we can just have fun with life. And that powerful word we can use in our mind, that word that is play, we can use in all sources of our life, play. We can use it when we go to work. We don't have to define work as work, we can define it as play. And so I just realized that in all aspects of our life, we could just take that one word in, breathe it into our life, that God source, that source of who we are, the energy of who we are, and recognize it today as one word, and that simply is play. I am grateful that. I am grateful for this knowing, I'm grateful for here, I'm grateful for this presence, I'm grateful for everyone here at Genesis. I am grateful for our new minister that is coming. I'm grateful for the source and energy of God and all that is. I'm grateful for the presence and the source of all light. I'm grateful for it all. And so with that, I give this, this prayer, these energies over to that one source that says yes, yes, yes to it all. I call it good. I call it God because it is always good because it is always and truly all God. And so it is. And so with that, I welcome to the stage our guest artist, Joe and Benny, and our awesome, excellent band, Second Shot.
give her the full, the full uh, stage time for the finish of that song. That was so wonderful. Is everybody awake now? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Well, good morning, Genesis, both here and online. I'm Reverend Liz Morante, and I'm from Tacoma. I don't live there now, but Born and bred, 1954, Tacoma General Hospital. I don't even think it's named that anymore. But it is. Nope. Is there? Okay. Good. So that's where I'm from. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I've been a minister with Centers for Spiritual Living since 1999, um, up here in Seattle and then in Monterey and back in Seattle, uh, semi-retired, which allows me to come speak in Genesis, which is very fun. So I'm just delighted to be back with you all this morning, and especially for this month with this topic. Play. The power of play. Do we have it this time? Yes, the power of play. There we go. And you've already had two talks uh, by Reverend Eric and Reverend Dawn, so there's going to be a little bit of overlap. There's going to be some kind of reminders. Uh, but some of today is kind of about permission. <clears throat> because I don't know about you all, but I'm a Capricorn. And Capricorns, if, if you believe and read, as little kids, we're kind of old. We are old people. So when we're adults, it's when we need to learn to play. But if you didn't play when you were a little kid, <laughs> it can be a little hard. And um, I don't know if I'm the only one here, but I got one of those lines down the middle of my forehead that means I think about things really hard. So it can be hard to remember to play, and that play is a good thing. Because life is serious. And uh, if I didn't think life was serious 20 years ago, I sure have a lot more evidence for it. <laughs> so sometimes we resist play because there's so much to get done. And we kind of have a cultural schizophrenia around play. Because Eric started out the month by talking about balance, the need for balance. And we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we know that old adage, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And at the same time, there are also still lots of phrases. Stop playing around. How many of you were told that as a little kid? Stop playing around. Stop fooling around. And... This might be more British English, but what are you playing at? And, oh, he's just playing at whatever his job is. He's just, she's just playing at being a minister. She's not really doing it, she's just playing. So while we talk about needing balance, we also talk about play being somehow not acceptable, not valuable. And maybe kind of shallow. And we're spiritual people, so we don't want to be shallow. <laughs> right? And then, if that weren't all bad enough, uh, if you read magazines, and this is where sometimes we women really do have it harder because this tends to be more in women's magazines. If any even still exist, if I'm saying it's like this. Well, I just remember it's, it's like <laughs> schedule in your self care, schedule in your playtime. So then play becomes a should, which kind of takes the play out of play. So lots of mixed messages about play. But play is powerful. It is critical. And in a minute, I'm going to tell you some thoughts I have about why that's so. But first, let's get a definition. Can you believe you're three weeks into this? And I don't think we got a definition, but I'm a classic 
minister, I can go for the I go to my dictionary, which is like this thick if it's on its side. <laughs> there are 94 um what's the word? Not headings, 94 entries under play in my dictionary. And you know, it's a noun, it's a verb, it's a transitive verb, it's an intransitive verb. We don't really care for that today. <laughs> but what I did love when I looked it up is that one of the words that our English word play is derived from is Middle Dutch. So you can now know that you can come home from your church with actually some educating. Middle Dutch word called planning that means and I smile because this is so great. To leap for joy, dance, rejoice, and be glad. To leap for joy, dance, rejoice, and be glad. So to me, play is whatever helps us get there to that place of leaping and dancing and rejoicing. Now, as, as Reverend Don told us last week, you know, play looks different. We all get to choose what that means. For some of us, play looks goofy and loud and, you know, extroverted and silly. Now, that doesn't mean if you're a quieter person that you don't play. You may be more drawn to as we describe the zen of something, remember that whole zen of motorcycle maintenance? Or flow, and I only wanted to bring up flow because I wanted to show you that by Chicks and Mihaly. Do you guys remember that book? Did you, some of you don't, okay. My former husband was a therapist, so he knew that book. And <laughs> it was a CZ long thing, so I was gonna try to impress you this morning. <laughs> but you know, I can pronounce Chicks and Mihaly, look it up, <laughs> except you won't be able to because you can stuff it. <laughs> anyway, for quieter folks, their play is not going to be silly. It could be just in that flow of what they're doing. There's a wonderful word, entrainment, where your mind is just moving in a wonderful harmony. But I think both both a sort of louder, more externally viewable, extrovert-type play and more introvert, internal play, both carry a sense of timelessness, of time out of time, that takes us out of our daily lives, which is a great segue into why play is powerful. First, I'm going to tell you a story that shows how playfulness is powerful. And this is from the Hasidic tradition. When Rabbi Sima Bunim of Pchisha was a young man, he made a living for a period of time in the lumber business. Every year he traveled to Danzig Fair, where many merchants gathered, some selling and some buying trees and lumber. This is a great story because my family was in the timber industry, so there you go. Um, on one of these trips, when he was by the river in Danzig, a terrible thing happened. A certain Jew slipped and fell into the swift current of the surging river. Another moment and he would drown. Everyone panicked and they were all crying out in terror, save him, save him. And they were all astonished to hear Rabbi Bunam cry out to the drowning man, give my regards to Leviathan, the legendary giant fish. Kind of weird, especially for a rabbi, what the heck? The drowning man, who had lost hope of fighting the current, heard him and suddenly began to struggle again to save himself. Why? Because the rabbi's levity snatched him out of his despair and aroused his will to live. He finally found a floating plank that had been cast out from a passing ship and held onto it until he was able to get back safely to shore. 
There was a big crowd on the shore, but the man went straight to the rabbi and fell on his neck saying, you saved my life. If it wasn't for your clever words, I would have died because of my despair and the confusion I was in because of everybody's screams. Have you ever done that? Everybody's going, oh no, oh no, oh no. And you kind of go into the, oh no. But, he said, your joke aroused my will to live because of you, I'm alive. In later years, when Sima Budin became a Reb, he used to tell this story and conclude, see the power of joy, the power of humor, the power in being playful. Who to thunk? Who to thunk? So that idea that I said earlier of timelessness and taking us out of ourselves, this is a great example of his, the rabbi calling out, Give my regards to Leviathan. Pulled a drowning man out of his focus on this. Have you ever noticed that when you've got a problem and you're like this, that you're not going to solve it? You have to do something to get your head out which is actually a way I talk about treatment. And if you don't know what treatment is, it's affirmative prayer that we teach here at Centers for Spiritual Living. And you want to talk to practitioners about that because it is the most effective and powerful tool this teaching has. But that's not our talk today. So play also gets us out of what we're staring at. And there's several other things that play does. First of all, it refreshes and rejuvenates us. When we play, when we take that break to play, it's like a mental and emotional and often physical cleansing. So we can go back to whatever we've been doing made new. I know that when I go on vacation, especially when I was working full time, loved my work, loved my work, but going on vacation made me come back. I mean, this is obvious, you know this, but we forget any kind of play. Even a 10 minute play takes us out of ourselves and refreshes us. It renews our energy and that rejuvenation, we know that means re and right? Anybody not want? Were you thinking? <laughs> like that. So, building on that, play gives us a new perspective. As simple as standing on your head and you have a new perspective, new way to see life. I love to travel. That's one of my favorite ways to play. And when I travel, especially abroad, I see things newly. I see how other people do things. I see how other countries do things. I see different architecture, different food, just different ways people act. I saw this um, YouTube clip on how to not dress like a tourist when you go to Europe. Uh, and, you know, one of it was, yeah, don't wear your exercise clothes. <laughs> but kind of in an opposite way, this woman was saying, you know, a lot of people in the U.S. really glam up and they're much more understated in Europe. You know, don't wear all that makeup, the false eyelashes, like I'm somebody who does, no, but, but it was just interesting. You know, forget the glam, forget the dressing up, just classic, understated. So it's interesting to see the way people do things. And I you know in France, I love looking at the women there because they all look chic. And even though I don't look chic very often, I love seeing it. <laughs> and it also gives me ideas. The power of the scarf. <laughs> Ladies, the power of the scarf. But new perspectives help us come back into our life and find new solutions. How many times have you gone away from a problem and come back with a break 
and all of a sudden seen a new way to do it just because you were doing something completely different and playful. And why that happens is because play opens and expands our creativity. Many people, many people do art these days. Now that sounds like a weird thing to say, except that I seem to have been in a position as a guest speaker to often speak on the theme of creativity. And every time I do, three more friends have started doing art in their free time. And that is not my skill. And so I'm always being intimidated, like, oh, I can't be creative because I don't do art. And it's just amazing, boom, 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 how many people let themselves express through art. And it gives joy and it gives vision. For me, I cook. I'm not going to make a pie crust for you, but I can cook. That gets me into new things. I love learning languages because that helps reveal to me the way a culture thinks because the way different languages put phrases together, very different, very different. So I love that opening up. And play, as it expands that creativity, what's important about it is if you are like me, and somebody said, okay, we're gonna do one of those sip and paint. Anybody been to a sip and paint? <laughs> well, the only time I went, I was um, not drinking and I was like really bummed because I'm a person who needs to sip to paint. And so I didn't have that thing. And I remember everybody, you know, you start painting, they show you a thing and you have to copy. I, I didn't know you were supposed to do, they were going to give you an assignment, a model, a template, and then you do your version of it. And so everybody goes around the room, you know, looking. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, look at that. And then mine, they'd always come and I go, oh. Ah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I kid you not. I kid you not. This is, and that hampers my creativity. But when we can be in that mood of play, there's no comparison. Creativity does not need comparison certainly doesn't need seriousness. And again, when we think of it as play, we become so much more free to express. And in that freedom, I think more of our true self, and I would say more of our divine self, can come out too. And finally, the reason why play is so powerful is because back to that definition, it leads us to joy. And in the words of Teilhard de Chardin, joy is the infallible sign of God's presence. So when we allow ourselves to play and be playful and be brought out of perhaps our mundane, serious self, we become more open and more permeable. permeable to the divine, and to expressing that. And all of that is a great antidote to what can pull us in a very different direction these days. I had a, a colleague once give a talk, and he talked about, if you're in fear, you cannot be creative. And this world needs new solutions and creativity. So the best way to get there is if we play and we can open our hearts and remember the presence of God right here, right now in the midst. And then while things seem to be drowning and we gotta be serious about it, maybe we need to say, give my regards to Leviathan and open up and remember that all of us were children once. All of us 
are lovable. All of us in some place in ourselves, in our truth, are innocent. And that's that play. So as I close, I'll give you some tips to pull into that playfulness. First, give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to play. I hope that I've given you some good reasons so that any of you who are serious are like, okay, she told me these are good reasons, so. Okay, so my mom would approve. Or just, bless your mom. Just let her be yourself. <laughs> Check out your beliefs. If you have resistance to play, really pay attention. You know, in this teaching, one of the things we say is pay attention to your thoughts. Don't believe them. But pay attention to them because they either support us in the lives we want or they get in our way. And if you find you've got some stuff about play, go see a practitioner. Get those beliefs healed. Some of you have heard of the term of getting a um, prayer partner or a prayer posse. You know, when somebody's got something they go off and they'll put it email, that's what's wonderful about being in our communities, have a prayer posse, well, why not get a play partner or a play posse? Eric has, as I happen to know, a group that he plays Mexican train dominoes with. I don't know if they do it once a month or every other week. And what's really great, I don't, I played it once, I think, but what's really great about dominoes is, is, you know, you can, Always play games with people who get really serious and competitive. Chip Frank. <laughs> you know, so they kind of take the play out of play because they just really want to win. Well, in Mexican train, they wear hats. They wear like these hats they make, I think. And to me, that's a reminder. We're playing. I mean, yeah, they have symbolism and stuff like that. But these goofy hats. Help them remember to play. So get a play posse. Heck, call it a sangha. Have a play sangha. And then I'd like to invite you to cultivate some qualities. Cultivate a what if consciousness. As stuff comes up in your life, say, what if this was totally for my good? What if this is the best thing that ever happened to me? What if I just wore purple tomorrow all over? <laughs> what if, what if I took up the cello? <laughs> what if, what if this person I've been having such a difficult time with is actually so much like me, I just need to open to see it differently? What if? It's a very playful consciousness. Similarly, cultivate curiosity. Cultivate curiosity. Instead of, as I know I want to do, judging something or having an opinion, and heaven knows we can get into interesting discussions these days, be Curious. See if you can lean into being curious. Oh, what causes you to think that way? Or tell me about yourself. How did you come to that conclusion? Be curious. Think of all those children saying, why? Well, why? Well, why? And you know, as adults, sometimes we're demanding answers, but as kids are just going, ah, they're trying to understand and expand. Why? And finally, and I'm sure you've heard this before, cultivate a sense of wonder, a sense of awe, a sense of beauty. Go out in nature. If you have... 10 minutes to go somewhere where there are trees or there's water or there's mountains. We live in the Northwest. That all of those take us out of ourselves to something broader, more expanded, more joyful. 
Being in a beautiful forest can make us leap for joy or just quietly feel our hearts so big. Watching squirrels run around and play, or dogs, or children. Find a kid. Don't stalk them, but just watch them. <laughs> and cultivate that sense of wonder. Because cynicism is, got, is not going to get us where we need to be in this world but a sense of wonder, of awe, and a willingness to play ourselves into joy, to play ourselves into remembering God is. So let's play. I invite you into knowing that play with me. As I know that God is not serious. I know that infinite life in whom, in which I have my being, is all life, is full life, is creative life, is joyful life. And that, as the poet Tabor said, God respects me when I work, but it loves me when I sing. So knowing that I am always the beloved, I allow my heart to open. I allow myself to be brought to leaping, whether internally or externally, to be leaping, to be rejoicing and remembering that there is a power and a presence in the universe that is here for me, that loves me exactly as I am, and that stands ready to move through me, to bless my life, to bless the lives of others, to bless the planet. I remember to play. I remember to be permeable to God. I give thanks for this now, and I know it is done and moving.
you for that. I feel a little tender in this moment. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's that going back to my childhood and singing that song periodically. Thank you, that was beautiful. Thank you, Second Shot and Joan Finn. Oh, it's time to move into that portion of our, our service where we get to, you know, focus on our giving and our receiving. And if you've not already done so, please take a moment to fill out um, your prayer card. Um, if you're online, you can now submit a prayer request to genesiscsl.org. And once you have completed your prayer request, please move into the crafting of a gift to Genesis. Please remember that our center is supported by God. Mm. And we welcome you to be part of how God's support shows up. If you're on Facebook, please visit our website, again at genesiscsl.org. Let us take a moment for all whom are still crafting. as we say our offering blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that receive, and I am thankful. So this time Andrew's going to collect those and we will sing our abundance song. Thank you. for we will take these prayers into our hearts as practitioners for the next coming week and know the truth of who you are, know the truth of God. And I know that as we give, so shall we receive. And with that I say, and so it is. Amen. Hmm. Thank you for joining us today. I'm wishing each and every one of you a week filled of joy, a week filled with play, a week to go out and live it up because it's still summertime in Seattle, baby. So let us stand and do our closing song. Thank you.